Hi there, welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tom Hadley and this is the Earth Stories YouTube channel where I chat about wildlife, landscape and travel photography. Today's video is all about planning photo trips. Uh, they're such important things, such amazing uh, opportunities, but we put a lot of time and a lot of money into doing these things. So I wanted to share some thoughts about how to make sure that your photo trips are the best possible experience and the photos you make are as amazing as possible. So that's what's coming up. Okay, so where do we start with uh, photography trip planning? Well, the first thing I'd say is that it's really important to have an objective for a photo trip. Uh, not just treat it like a holiday, not just treat it as I'm gonna turn up in this place and shoot everything I can uh, and take all sorts of amazing photos. Um, I think it helps to just think a little bit more carefully about exactly what you're planning to do uh, and how to go about it. I've got a trip coming up in a few weeks, so I'm gonna use that as an example and show you how I walk through this process uh, and hopefully that'll be a useful example. So my objective for my next trip is going to be about coastal landscape photography and seascapes. That's an area I identified uh, in a previous video that I did where I was talking about my portfolio, uh, that it was just an area that I didn't have a lot of variety and diversity and so I thought, you know what, this would make a great opportunity uh, to go and do a trip uh, where I can really nail down some high quality portfolio worthy images of that type of stuff. And I'm also planning this trip uh, a little bit in response to the last trip that I did, uh, which was a trip to Namibia. And I wanna talk about that a little bit because that was an amazing experience, but it was quite a complicated trip. It was essentially a road trip around northern Namibia where we covered between two and 3,000 kilometers uh, of travel um, and I was trying to shoot everything and anything along the way. And although I had an amazing time on that trip, I do remember feeling a little bit overwhelmed photographically at certain points just because the logistics weren't easy. We were constantly traveling, uh, driving big distances every day, um, not entirely sure uh, what time of day we were going to arrive in certain locations. And so I remember feeling almost a little bit stressed quite a bit of the time and under pressure that we'd arrive somewhere and I'd immediately be looking around for the type of photography that I was going to do, uh, worrying about the light because I knew that I only had one, perhaps one night in that location and therefore that evening or very early the following morning was my only opportunity to take any photographs. So I slightly spent that trip in a state of constant stress where I was just worry, worrying, worrying all the time about what I was gonna do and how I was gonna fit in enough photography. And although I came away from that trip with a lot of great shots, I also missed a lot of shots. And there were lots of places where if I just had a little bit more time, uh, I would have done better, especially at some of the really iconic locations. I think the, my biggest regret uh, was visiting a place called Spitzkopper and we arrived, the weather wasn't great. Um, we didn't have uh, particularly long to be there and it had taken us longer to travel there than we thought. So I arrived kind of mid-morning uh, when the light wasn't perfect. And I remember almost arriving and thinking, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do this justice. And that's a kind of horrible place to be in as a photographer where mentally you've almost slightly given up on the possibility of a great image before you've even started. So I was quite determined that for the next trip, I was going to do things differently. I was going to simplify. I was going to make it possible to spend more time, do a bit less, and concentrate on a smaller area and really, really nailing uh, the best possible shots. So once we've nailed down the objective, which in this case is coastal landscape and seascape photography, how do we go about uh, nailing down the more defined plan? First of all, you've got to choose a location. Um, so I started out just dealing with the practicalities of it. How much time do I have for this trip? Uh, what's my budget? Who's coming on this trip with me if I'm not going on my own? Uh, and just making sure that uh, all of the things that I'm planning on doing uh, fit with that. 
So in this particular case, um, I'm not on my own. We're taking opportunity uh, for actually for the family to go away and for all of us to go away together. And so it needs to be a location that doesn't just work for me and my photography, but also works for the other people that are coming too. It's gonna affect my photography if I've got people in tow who are having a miserable time. So I've got to cater for their needs as well. Other than your own practicalities, the other thing you've got to bear in mind is the suitability of the location for what you're trying to achieve. So certain places might be good at certain times of year, um, certain places might be the right climate or have the right sort of weather that you're looking for, or even just things like different sunrise and sunset times. Take an example of somewhere like Iceland. Uh, clearly going to Iceland in the winter time is an entirely different sort of trip than going ice to Iceland in the summertime. The temperatures are massively different, the scenery is massively different, uh, the sunrise sunset times are massively different. So you've got to bear all that sort of stuff in mind. So for this trip I decided to focus on the Mediterranean and I was looking at uh, obviously countries uh, on the Mediterranean coast, I was looking at islands in the Mediterranean, and I ended up narrowing it down to three choices. And those choices were Sardinia and the Balearic Islands of Menorca or Mallorca. So they're all islands with interesting landscapes, they've all got great beaches, they've all got great accommodation options, and they're all affordable. And the flight times for me from the UK mean that uh, it's not going to take too much time to get there and the cost is reasonable as well. So the rest of my planning really was kind of the practical logistics of it, just honing down the kind of the feel of places. Um, I quite like the idea of Sardinia. It's supposed to be a beautiful island. Some of the coast is uh, spectacular, but Ultimately, I was struggling to just find the right sort of availability of accommodation in exactly the right sort of area um, that really worked for us. So I ended up choosing Mallorca as the final destination for this trip. So once I'd chosen Mallorca as a destination, I was then looking at exactly where to base us to have the right experience, get the right sort of photographs, because what I didn't want to do was spend the entire trip running round and round the island trying to shoot every single location. There are a huge variety of uh, beaches on Mallorca, um, there's spectacular coastline all across the north of the island, and there's some really lovely quiet spots where you can get away from uh, the crowds and just the sort of regular tourist destinations that are more in the south of the island. I tend to use Google Earth as my initial planning tool uh, just to start to figure out what the photographic possibilities are uh, and which exact locations are gonna really work for me. So let's take a dive into Google Earth and I'll show you the thought process that I went through for this trip. So let's take a look at Mallorca. There are basically three types of information that I use. The first is this sort of geographical data. The second is photographic data. And the third is what I call anecdotal data. I'll show you quick examples of all three. Let's just flip into the 3D view here of Mallorca. So you can see uh, straight away that the island has most of its interesting uh, coastline is uh, along uh, the north and northwestern sides here. One of the things that can be a challenge with this sort of coastal photography that I'm looking to do is that you can end up relying quite heavily on uh, sky conditions. If you end up with flat blue skies it all gets a little bit boring. So I was interested in the mountainous areas of Mallorca uh, which as you can see are mostly along the northern coast here um, and a little bit over here. So I started having a look at, around and thinking about where the sun was gonna be in the sky. Um, so just focusing in here, this, this area around uh, Alcudia Bay, um, I thought was quite interesting. There's a couple of really well-known um, beaches and viewpoints here. Um, at Es Colomer is a famous viewpoint. Uh, and then you've got a couple of beaches, Calafuiguera is one, there's another beach down here which is uh, quite famous. Um, but there's not a lot of um, accommodation, so I'm just thinking about the logistics, thinking about having to drive in and out of those areas. Um, I could stay around Port de Palenza, um, but I think it's quite a busy area, and likewise uh, Port d'Alcudia here, um, also quite busy. So. What actually happened was I started looking along the coast um, further down this way and uh, this is a very, very quiet area around 
the village of Colonia de Saint-Père and the village of Bethlehem. And there's this really interesting uh, headland, uh, which as you can see from the map has no uh, real towns or, or even villages. Um, and this uh, started to interest me greatly as a really quiet, tucked away little corner of Mallorca that could be an ideal photo location. One of the things that appealed to me about uh, Bethlehem and this area is that you're not going to get a lot of tourists in this area because the roads um, are further to the south so anybody just touring around the coastline isn't really going to go uh, into this area, particularly around Bethlehem, because it's a dead-end road uh, and there are no um, beaches um, and this whole uh, cape here is not very um, accessible. Now of course this area here um, essentially faces west so I've got to bear in mind that a lot of the photography here will probably be uh, late in the day sunset type photography because as the sun rises uh, this area just here uh, is going to be blocked uh, in the early morning by uh, these high uh, little ridge of mountains behind. But what really started to appeal to me about this area was just this sort of bowl of the landscape just here. And the fact, as I mentioned before, that not wanting to have uh, just blue skies as background, there's a possibility here of shooting along this coastline and using these fabulous uh, mountains, which you can see have got some lovely uh, sort of texture uh, ridges to the slopes as the background to a lot of the photographs that I might take. And if I just spin the map round here so that you can see the coastline um, and dive in a little bit closer, uh, you can see there's all sorts of possibilities here. There's, there's lots of lovely little bays dotted along this coastline all the way along uh, at Bethlehem itself and then uh, some nice cliff tops and a clear uh, coastal path that runs into this area and runs all the way along the coast here uh, and ends up at this point here which again looks like it's got some really nice features and even what looks like a, uh, a pier uh, that sticks out uh, here so that um, potentially uh, there's almost uh, 270 degrees of shooting angle around this bay um, depending on the light conditions, depending on the angle of the sun and exactly how I want to shoot it. All of it is framed by these really beautiful uh, hills in the background. So for me, this has got a huge amount of potential, just this small area here around Bethlehem. If I move further down the coast a little way, the other thing that I noticed uh, just the other side of here was we've got this beach just here, uh, which has got uh, sand dunes uh, at the back of it. Um, so it's a much flatter piece of coastline, not the cliffs that we've got up the way, um, but uh, there's lots of uh, interesting dune photography here that could be done. So I really liked this area and I thought there were, uh, it gave me several possibilities with this beach here, the area immediately in front of Bethlehem, and then the Cape and the possibilities there. And this whole area is within either a five to 10 minute drive or uh, a half an hour. Uh, 45 minutes or so of walking time. So I don't have to go far. I don't have to worry about um, logistics and transport. I don't have to worry about uh, what the family are doing. It's all quite convenient. It can fit around any other stuff that we want to do. So the second resource that I wanted to show you was a website, uh, an online community that I've become part of recently that I'm finding massively useful for my photography. And it's a website called locationscout.net. And there's a couple of different ways that you can use it, but I prefer this site massively over other ones that I've used, whether, whether you're a Flickr user or uh, I'm part of uh, one called 500px. But the reason I love Location Scout so much is because it's really about photographers helping other photographers with useful information rather than just sharing images for likes and comments. So here's the uh, Location Scout um, website and I'll just show you quickly uh, two different ways that you can use it. The first way you can use it is just by searching for a location. Uh, so if I just whack in uh, Mallorca in here uh, you'll see everywhere is um, there's either the whole island or I can look at particular parts of Mallorca. Um, 
but what it does is it just nicely organizes uh, some of the top spots um, to visit. So if I just click on this. So if I'm going somewhere and I don't know the sorts of places or, um, you know, and this is my first trip to, to Mallorca, so I, I don't know everywhere, um, I can look at this and see if there's any uh, amazing places like this incredibly cool rock arch that I think, crikey, I need to go there. I need to make sure that I don't miss out on that. So as much as you can do the uh, geographical research yourself, you still don't know what you don't know. And so using a site like Location Scout just to check for any other areas uh, that you may not know about um, that are absolutely spectacular and you think oh well, if nothing else I've got to go I've got to take a trip to there it just helps you plan in alternatives and, and extra little places and, and spectacular views that you really don't want to miss based on uh, the travels of other people the second way that location scout is really really useful is that uh, all of the um, uh, places uh, on the map are uh, GPS tagged so you can go into this map view and as you can see they have got pins uh, for absolutely everywhere. So here's Mallorca. You can see there's uh, 119 uh, pins in that island alone. So if I jump in, it tells me a couple of interesting things. First of all, it just gives me this little view of where are other photographers going on this island? Where have they taken photographs that it's worth uh, looking at? And as you can see, there's a pretty good spread around the island, but quite a lot along uh, this sort of mountainous coastline around this bay here, which kind of reassures me that my assumptions about the best place to go uh, were actually uh, correct. And if I go in a little bit further, as I suspected, Look at the uh, the Cape and Bethlehem. It's actually not that much photography, uh, certainly for people on this side, that's been done around there. And for me, that's actually a really good thing because I don't want to go and shoot the places that everybody else has been. I want to make unique photos uh, that are interesting. And so the fact that I seem to have stumbled upon a quiet corner is really quite a good thing. But as we can see, there is one pin here in uh, Bethlehem itself. So if I click on that, and then on the image behind it. Yeah, look, you can see there, that looks absolutely amazing, doesn't it? The, um, the coastline itself is full of uh, texture and interest. The mountains make a fantastic uh, backdrop that looks like it's probably a sunset picture by uh, the position of the sun. So everything that I kind of had in my mind's eye when I was looking at the pure geographical data, by using other people's photography, it suddenly brings the whole thing to life. I can start to imagine myself there. Uh, I can imagine uh, the sorts of angles, the sorts of pictures that are, are, are possible. So let's just have a look at this other pin just down here. And yeah, again, look at the look at the potential, look at those sunsets uh, and all the interesting uh, uh, textures there are. This is the, the flatter bit of the coastline again with those mountains behind. So lots of possibilities. This, this is really helping me uh, get that reassurance that if I go and base myself in Bethlehem, um, that I'm in exactly the right place and there, there are the possibilities that are there are, are match what the, uh, the geographical data showed me. So the final thing I try and do is try and capture some background anecdotal information about a particular area. And it's amazing if you go search the web how there are travel blogs about not just every particular country or every particular area, but even sometimes down to very specific areas. And here's a quick example. Um, I was just searching on the web uh, for information about Bethlehem and this headland and the beaches around here. And I stumbled across uh, this particular uh, travel blog um, that someone's written. And uh, they're locals because I'm, I'm looking at the English language version here, but this is actually in Spanish. I've, I've used Google Translate. Um, and what you can see is that this gives me superb background information on uh, just the uh, practicalities of being in this area and walking in this area. So this blog literally describes somebody walking from Bethlehem to the end of that headland. Um, and it's got lots of useful little uh, reference photos so that I can um, be sure that I'm kind of going the right way. It shows, you know, forks in the path. Um, it shows me, uh, you know, everything from down to, you know, the sort of footwear I'm going to need. Um, it shows me the viewpoint from some of those cliffs. I get an idea of, of angles and perspectives. Um, and even though these aren't, you know, these are only uh, sort of uh, 
snapshots, um, they're incredibly useful for me. Um, I get can see, uh, you know, what some of the, the, the textures of those rocks are. Um, it doesn't matter that this is shot in the middle of the day light. This is absolutely uh, a gold for me to be able to uh, just figure out this place in some detail. It shows me, shows me what the water conditions are like, even shows me there's some underwater possibilities. I hadn't considered that, so that's a useful thing to add to uh, my thinking on all this. Um, so yeah, this is just really, really useful information, uh, just helping me understand where to go, how long it takes to get around this particular area. And now, having read this blog, I feel that I'm really, really well armed with information to be able to uh, do this location justice when I'm actually there myself. So do go look for that stuff. It can be uh, the final piece of the puzzle to making sure you're really, really well prepared to go and photograph a particular location. I am a self-confessed map geek. And so the planning of these trips uh, and the research of locations and looking at all that stuff in detail is something that I can spend absolutely hours and hours doing. I'm not suggesting that you need to do it quite to the degree that I do, but hopefully this video has shown that a little bit of planning and a little bit of thought really can make a difference in the kind of images that you ultimately come away with uh, when you go on a trip abroad. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and please consider hitting the subscribe button so you will be the first to find out when I publish uh, my next video on YouTube. I will be vlogging while I'm in Mallorca, so it will be interesting afterwards to look back on this video and see how the planning that I've shown you today uh, resulted in the success of my images that I actually shoot on that trip. That's coming up in a few weeks and there's lots of other interesting videos coming up in the meantime. So thank you ever so much for watching. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, take care, go safe.